My whole life changed when I was 11 years old. My sister and I were separated from our parents, who moved back to Korea, and we were adopted by my aunt and uncle, who lived in Alaska. This specific event disrupted my whole entire life, and it became an invisible scar that I carried with me, and will probably forever be a part of me. Unlike my 31-year-old self, back then, I didn't have the tools to deal with what was going on. I used my pain as an excuse to rebel in school, to cling on to friends, boyfriends with not-so-good intentions, and to completely detach myself from my future and my life. I won't go into details, but you can just imagine how self-destructive I was. But even through those years, I remember feeling like I wasn't really living my life, as if my reality didn't match what I had expected for myself. I guess I believed deep down that I deserved a better life than the one that I was living in. I can't really remember the exact moment when something switched in me, but it felt like it happened overnight. I decided I was going to stop being the victim of my own life. I took action, and the first thing I did was move out of Alaska, homeschooled myself, and started over in a new place, not knowing a single soul. The change was scary, but also freeing at the same time. And ever since then, I've been making a conscious decision to rebuild my life and to reroute my story with the plot that's been handed to me. Surprisingly, I'm not ashamed to talk about those years, but more proud that I was able to completely turn my life around. When I look at that time in my life through my current lens, I realize that the separation from my parents actually gave me the freedom to think for myself. The loneliness I endured gave me a chance to establish my independence, and the turbulent roller coaster became the contrast to appreciate my life today. This is the narrative I tell myself to accept what was and finally move on. And honestly, I think that's all that matters. I don't believe that we are just the sum of our upbringing, culture, genetics, or even the unique alignment of the stars. Sure, these can factor into who we are and set the foundation initially, but I think our vision, willpower, and perseverance hold so much more power to the storyline of our own lives. Jean-Paul Sartre once described us as a painter who can create anything on the canvas. He said we can create ourselves and our essence through the free choices that we make. And I couldn't agree with him more. Because seeing life in this way makes me feel like I'm in control, no matter the circumstances. If you're also looking to change something in your life, I hope that my story gives you a little bit of inspiration. And also, if I could share with you the three most important lessons I've learned through my growth journey, the first one would be that we have to change the narrative to one that serves us. For the longest time, I used my adoption story as a mental crutch for everything that was wrong in my life. I thought others couldn't relate to me, so I stopped trying to make real friends. I didn't have my parents nearby, so I stopped going to school. You get the idea. And while it may seem like a legitimate excuse, the person who was suffering the most from this narrative was me, and I was getting tired of it. Changing the narrative really saved me. It took me out of my own negative spiral and gave me new hope to turn things around. I realized that while the circumstances didn't change, the story I told myself is the one that really matters because from there, it has a ripple effect of changes into all areas of our lives. So no matter what the situation is, remember that you have the power to change the narrative to one that puts you in a productive mindset, to accept, to change, or to move on.
The second lesson is that we have to embrace discomfort. And I think as a culture, we often glamorize transformation, the after the fact. But in reality, the process of getting there is not always a smooth ride. It requires us to steer away from the status quo, fight back old temptations, maybe even break ties with friends, and to leave part of ourselves behind. I remember an old friend once saying to me, you know, you were so much more fun back in the day. And for a while, that really bothered me. Maybe she has a point. But then I had a good look at myself and liked the new me so much more. That's all that mattered. Change always comes with discomfort, whether it's our past pulling us back or stumbling to find our new beginnings. But I think it's the risk that we have to take in order to commit to the life that we think we deserve. So don't avoid it, but embrace it because the discomfort is a sign of your growth. Last but not least, we have to fight our own battles and not compare ourselves to others. From the outside, I think it's easy to point out other people's privileges and justify why it's okay for us to stay the way that we are. But what we don't see is their pain, their story, and what they've been through to get to where they are. I'm still working on not getting into the habit of saying, they have it so much better than me, or they have it way worse than I do. Because everyone's battle is so unique and different. The best that we can do is just focus on ourselves and once in a while, look back and see how far we've come. Now, I'm really grateful to have such a special relationship with my parents. And we've been catching up for all those years that we've been apart. In my everyday life, I'm surrounded by good people who want nothing but the best for me. I'm not perfect, but I feel like I'm on the right path and that counts for something. I thought that it was important for me to share this story with you because it's probably the most significant one that shaped me and my whole outlook on life. And I hope that it served as a reminder for you that it's never too late to change if you're not happy with the current trajectory of your life. Just remember, we're not just the main character of our own stories, but we are the author. So don't just be yourself, but create yourself. Collect pieces of this world that resonate with your soul. Make your own family with the people that deeply and genuinely love you. Find a job that keeps you going. Find passions that inexplicably fulfills your heart. And most importantly, I hope you create a meaningful and beautiful life because you deserve it.